Hello, everyone. Bill Apter from OneWrestling.com, live and in living color. You can see the blues, you can see the gray, you can see the comb over, and you can see Apter's Alley. And uh, the book right back there is, you should know the answer to this now. If somebody asks you, is wrestling fixed? What's the answer? Let's hear it. Right? I didn't know it was broken. So you can still get the book on Amazon.com. Hey, listen. Um, for many, many years, everybody, everybody has asked me about uh, all the magazines that I've worked for through the years. And are there any wrestling magazines? Thank you. Big Ray is, uh, uh, is in the room. Can I see your ticket, please? Okay. I see your ticket. Uh, hello, uh, Alan Bennett, Danny, Danny. Hello. And Trey Porter. Hello. And, uh, um, thanks. 3,300. Oh, a lot of people coming into the room here. Oh, great. Right. That's right. Big Ray gets in on a uh, on a discount here uh, because he is uh, family. And, of course, he's our senior producer here at OneWrestling.com and OneWrestlingVideo.com. So before I get to the chat box, a bunch of things to talk about. So through the years in the magazines, the most important thing to any of the wrestlers, any of the Sports entertainers. No, they were wrestlers back then. The biggest thing in their life was, hey, after, how can I get on the cover? And you know what? I never thought I would be one of those guys to say, how can I get on the cover? But several months ago, um, Darren Wood, the editor and publisher of Total Wrestling Magazine in the United Kingdom. Yeah. That magazine, Total Wrestling, the one that I used to be the editor-in-chief along with uh, Steve Ganfield, who was my uh, faithful assistant. Go out there, Steve, if you're watching. Um, he, after Total Wrestling magazine went, went out of business, he decided recently in the past, I don't know, year, year and a half, to publish it, to buy the title and publish it. And... It's a great magazine. It's in the old-fashioned mold of the original Total Wrestling magazine and WOW magazine. And he's been asking me if I'd like to do a column, a monthly column, for that magazine. And I said, he's over in England. So I said, of course, mate. I'd love to do that. I said, uh, like all the wrestlers asked me through the years, can I get on the cover? And he said, of course. You were the face of the magazine for so many years. So I got... In the uh, mail today, in the post, uh, the November 2017 edition of Total Wrestling Magazine, which you can get, by the way, uh, just go to the Total Wrestling Magazine UK website. I don't have the URL in front of me right now. Hey, lots of people in the room here. Thank you. Come on. Keep coming. You know what? I'm not going to take tickets. You can all keep coming in. So anyway, here's the cover of Total Wrestling Magazine with uh, the phenomenal AJ Styles on the cover, and look, the phenomenal Willie Apta right above the logo announcing my return to Total Wrestling Magazine, and uh, he call, calls me the godfather of wrestling media. I'm very flattered that he called me the godfather. So welcome, everybody. There's a lot of news that's going on, but more important than the news, I want to answer so many of your questions at this point. Boy, a lot of people, it's getting crowded here in the back. You can see uh, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Uh, they have come back, two of my favorites, to witness what's going on today. So let's talk about some of the uh, news that has gone on this week. There were a lot of reports that Paige, that her career of this sensational pro wrestler, is over due to a neck injury. And it was confirmed partially this week on Monday Night Raw when they have now pulled her out of the Royal Rumble. However, however, they did not say that this is a career-ending injury. And, and just the other day, she tweeted out, the tweet said, 2018 is going to be my best year. So what do you make of that? That's that's uh, quite telling. I mean, we we don't know exactly what's been going on. And the reason we haven't reported it on OneWrestling.com, and Big Ray and I have talked uh, 
in the boardroom many times about this, is until we have a clear picture of what the injury is, number one, and number two, whether they said you can never compete again, then we're not going to report it. That's the way we do business on OneWrestling.com and OneWrestlingVideo.com. We have a new U.S. champion. As you know, uh, Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon finally agreed on something on SmackDown last night. Um, they decided to put the final match in the U.S. tournament of Bobby Roode and Jinder Mahal in the ring last night. And Bobby Roode is the new United States heavyweight champion. Congratulations. You are glorious, Bobby Roode. Now, you know what? I, I'm going back to the days in the magazines, back to the magazine days. The lineage of the United States championship that is utilized by the WWE going way, way, way back was not the one that we really used in the magazines. The one that we considered the real United States Heavyweight Championship back then was uh, the one that was held for so many years by the Sheik. Not the Iron Sheik, the original Sheik, the one in Detroit and Toronto. And his classic battles with Abdullah the Butcher and um, Bobo Brazil and Tex McKenzie, just some of the great challengers for that. So, but congratulations to, uh, to the terrific, the glorious Bobby Roode. I love his theme music. I want to, I want to come out to that entrance one day. If you ever had an entrance that you could come out to, what would it be? I'm going to get to your questions shortly. Um, congratulations also to Austin Aries. He's the new, uh, the new big guy in uh, impact wrestling. He's got the belt there. I'm glad to see him back in Impact Wrestling. And I will have within the next week and a half an exclusive interview right on One Wrestling Video with Austin Aries. And we won't just talk about Impact Wrestling. We're going to talk about veggies as well. Um, let me see. I had one or two other uh, notes here. Oh, what did you think of the uh, mixed match challenge last night? Um, uh, Sasha Banks and uh, Finn Balor beat, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, they beat uh, Natalia and Shinsuke Nakamura. So, yeah, what did you think? Did you watch it on Facebook? Did you like it? I thought it was pretty cool. I like all the new WWE products. By the way, after our hour or so is up here, I'd like you all to go to OneWrestling.com. That's the number one, not the word. OneWrestling.com. Um, oh, I'm covering the actors at least sign. There it is. Go to OneWrestling.com, and there's a link there. Uh, as you know, Brandy Rhodes, the gorgeous wife of Cody Rhodes, is on the show Wags in Atlanta, and she was quoted by the Hollywood, Hollywood Reporter saying that uh, she's not a typical homemaker. She certainly doesn't look like one, but you can read that whole story on OneWrestling.com and subscribe to OneWrestlingVideo.com, please. It's absolutely free. Okay, so let's start going through your questions. Um, QUX55, is the podcast coming back? Um, Tricky Nikki and I made a very good team on that podcast. We had, uh, we had a lot of listeners on there, and I miss doing it. But as I've mentioned on another All Questions Legal in the past, that it was a seven-day process. I mean, I was thinking about it all week, and then it took a lot of time to record, a lot of time for Tricky Nikki to produce it. And at the end, it was great for me. It was great for the fans. But unless, well, let me back up. The wrestling podcast genre is overcrowded, in my opinion. There's too many of them. It's very hard to compete. And, you know, we were, we were, we were doing really well. But the success of a podcast is not just by your numbers. It's sponsors coming and say, hey, you know, you can do this full time. You can uh, make a living out of our podcasts. We'll, uh, we'll advertise it for you. But uh, sponsorship is very rare. But I want to congratulate Bruce Pritchard. I mean, it's amazing the amount of listeners and sponsors and everything that uh, he has. And what Conrad 
Thompson has done is just uh, genius. Conrad, by the way, who's the producer of uh, Bruce's podcast and uh, Tony Schiavone's and formerly Ric Flair is engaged now to Megan. Oh, I feel like a gossip reporter engaged to Megan, the sister of Charlotte Flair. And of course the daughter of Ric Flair. So let's for the two of them. Woo. Congratulations. That's great. Trey Porter. Hello, Bill. Hey, Trey. Hey, Trey. That, uh, that rhymes. Okay. So the answer is no. And if you, somebody out there wants to sponsor it, we'll consider bringing it back. Um, Alex Domsky. I know that guy. Alex Domsky, you will see, is one of my uh, prime correspondents. And at most of the conventions, he's there shooting the, uh, is this on? Yeah. He's there shooting the videos of me interviewing all the great stars. Hey, Alex, and uh, welcome. And Alex will be my second pair of eyes when we watch the Royal Rumble, both the female and the male one, to make sure we don't miss any throwouts. And I'll be covering that on OneWrestling.com, match by match. Okay. Um, Dennis Bridgewater, WWE should put Owen Hart and China and Lawrence in the WWE Hall of Fame. I'm not sure what Lawrence you're talking about. Is that Lawrence Welk? Thank you, boys. Or is it Lawrence Taylor? I'm not sure who you mean. Um, Owen Hart and China, absolutely. I mean, no. Yes. Yeah. But uh, Dennis, um, chime in, please, and uh, and let me know what Lawrence you're talking about. Insane Bob's Crazy Shack. Hey, Bill. Hey, Insane Bob. Um, NOE Laura. Hello, Laura. Uh, Joe Rush. What's up, Bill? Well, it's a long story. See, one time I... No. Okay. No, I'm good. Thank you very much. David Bass said, hello to all professional wrestling fans. So I like that. I like that. Because now, as you know, got to get the comb over over here. Now, as you know, um, it's called sports entertainment. I mean, a lot of people, including some of my relatives, they'll say, oh, that wrestling is, uh, is fixed. Of course, I didn't know it was broken. Um, but I tell them it's not even called wrestling um, for the most part, by people who only know the WWE. They call it sports entertainment. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, thank you. Uh, Dennis Bridgewater says, I miss ECW. I do too. But you can watch some of the episodes on the WWE Network. It's only nine ninety nine dollars per month. And I'm on about a dozen of their shows the Paul Heyman biography, the Medusa one, and a whole lot of the Monday Night War. I missed the Monday Night War. And you know what? Smackdown, Smackdown, not Smackdown, Smackdown and Raw are, uh, I like the, the competitiveness of where the better show, where the better show. Need some more invasion. Have, I'd like to, I mentioned this on last week's uh, All Questions Legal. I'd like to see a New Japan Pro Wrestling invasion of the WWE, both brands. I think that would be great. Dennis Bridgewater says, New Jack is the truth. I would not say no. You're one of the most dangerous men in the world, but I love him. He calls me Wee Willie. Uh, Theanix3300, will you be at this year's Royal Rumble? Um, I will be at the Icons of Wrestling convention that weekend, all weekend in Philadelphia. Uh, I will be at Jake Roberts' show and Bruce Pritchard's show. Um, I will be at Raw. I may be at SmackDown. As for the Royal Rumble, I'm going to be honest. I may drop in to say hello during the day, but when you're working as a journalist or broadcast journalist for a pro wrestling website, it's easier to cover the matches from the couch with – uh, on the WWE Network, because I've got my the computer right here, uh, Lexi Rose, my wonderful poodle dog, right over here, and I'm watching, and it's it's easier to do it there. I mean, I'd like to be there because of the history of the first women's Royal Rumble ever, ever. I would love to be there, but uh, maybe. I mean, I'm out, but if not, come see me over at uh, the Icons of Wrestling convention. You go to Icons of Wrestling on Facebook, and I will have books to sign and sell. Um, no stealing. I'll have my audio book uh, as well. 
there. So I've got some. Okay, Wrestling on a Bridge. Bill, what's your favorite wrestling magazine cover of all time that I did? That's a great question. I had, there were so many. Um, I liked doing the studio photography covers. And I think one of the classiest covers that um, I ever shot was um, Mil Mascaris in the studio. He looked great because he always had these colorful masks. He had a great uh, physique and he knew how to pose. He knew how to pose. So I think the, let's take the body part away. There was a headshot that we ran with a yellow background when the uh, uh, International Wrestling Association was coming in to attack the WWWF. It was a promotional war. Eddie Einhorn from the Chicago Cubs was the, um, was the man putting up the money and Pedro Martinez was the promoter. So Mascaris was their champion. And we did a very tight face shot. I did that I shot of him. And uh, I think that's my favorite one because you can see the, the eyes and every little detail and the mask. And Ken Morgan, our art director, put that yellow uh, color behind him. And it was just, it was just great. Great question. Brian Vaughn. Thank you. Brian uh, sent me a message before with my, uh, with an audio message from my good friend, Sam Houston. Um, one of my favorite people in the whole world. Sam had said, what a nice guy I am, even though I put the figure four leg lock on him at the Cauliflower Alley Club two years ago. That's another story I'll tell for another time. Um, so Brian says, Bill, out of these names only, picking three names, oh, it's a test, I don't like tests, which do you think may make an appearance at Raw 25? Jeff Jarrett, um, maybe. Vince Russo, no. Shane Douglas, no. Um, Jim Cornette, yeah. Um, Ken Shamrock, no. Rock and Roll Express, yeah. However, however, here is my prediction. And everybody's saying no. But I just cannot believe that they are going to do Raw 25th anniversary of Monday Night Raw, the longest running live continuous broadcast in television history. No reruns, brand new shows all the time, most of the time. Too far up on the mic. Okay. Hulk Hogan's got to be there, don't you think? Maybe Jimmy Hart will bring him out. Uh, I. Maybe this will be the biggest secret in the world. It's, again, it's nothing that I know for sure. I can't tip you off on it because I don't know about it. And Hogan has tweeted that he's going to be sitting home watching it. So I can't imagine them doing World 25 without him. What you're going to do, brother? All right. Um, so, Brian, those are my answers. And thanks again for that message from Sam Houston. Retro Extreme 79. Hi, Bill. Hi, Retro Extreme 79. Is that your name? It's an unusual name. Your parents gave you a long name. Uh, I loved reading PWI, The Wrestler, and Inside Wrestling, but I also remember WOW Magazine. Thank you. That was, I, I love that, too. It was a great magazine, but whatever, whatever happened to it is it didn't last long. I joined WOW in, I think, the third issue, and it ran for maybe a year and a half, two years, while I was at the helm of it. Um, there were problems um, with the publishing company. Uh, there were issues with the publishing company. Um, nothing that I can reveal here, but it was enough to cause that magazine's demise. Uh, I missed that magazine too. I thought that was just a great product. And I really, I mean, back at PWI and Wrestler and Inside and Sports Review and all those magazines, um, I was uh, the senior editor, and I loved it. This was the first time I ever was the main guy in charge, along with uh, uh, Elliot Fromm, who was the head of the art department, and Tim Toe. He was the best sidekick. He was so good. Uh, but, yeah, I miss it. But that's what happened. They had some uh, – I think they had some issues with some of the other magazines and 
uh, non-wrestling magazines. They put out a lot of magazines. They put out Beanie Baby magazines. They put out uh, music magazines, rock and roll magazines, teen magazines. Yeah. So, oh, Insane Bob Crazy Shack says that was an awesome cover, that Mil Mascaris cover. Yeah. By the way, I was just joking. I was just joking last week when I said Mil Mascaris' real name is Mel Moskowitz. Just kidding. It's not. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because he's a friend of mine and he doesn't like people to know his name. Now, you can look it up, of course, but I'm not going to tell you. Um, Big Ray's wrestling show. Hey, Big Ray. Um, and Big Ray's, by the way, he, he's got a terrific son, Aiden, who's a huge wrestling fan. And I predict one day Aiden's going to be a championship wrestler. Uh, Big Ray says, I miss the magazines. I remember heading to the corner drugstore and buying the latest editions of Pro Wrestling Illustrated and WWF magazines. Yeah, that was great. In my book, by the way, and I, a lot of people tell me that, too. I actually got a an email from somebody after my book came out saying they used to ride their bike to the candy store in upstate New York every month to get PWI. And it was snowing so badly one time they got into an accident on their bike, broke their leg. So uh, I got his address and I sent him a copy of my audio book because I felt bad. He tried so hard to support what we did back then. And that was just great uh, nostalgia. Um, while more questions are coming in, um, your picks for um, the Royal Rumble, male and female, who do you think is going to win? You know, I change my pick every week and I always pick a dark horse and the dark horse of this week. And again, this is changeable up until the day of. This is totally changeable. Here's the dark horse of this week. A guy who is all the way on the top. All the way on the top. And I always say, I always say that if this guy was around during the days of Bruno San Martino, he would have been an amazing three-match challenger. But my dark horse this week that no one's going to buy is that the man who's going to to win the Royal Rumble as of 7.22 p.m. Eastern Time, United States, on January 17, 2018, will be Rusev. Okay? Dark horse for this week. I'll be coming up with a lot of dark horses because I can never make my mind up. Uh, Brandon Apter is out there. Brandon Apter happens to be related to me, um, and he has a... a podcast, an excellent podcast. You can look on uh, his Twitter feed or you can look at, uh, uh, just go to Google, uh, called After Hours. Very clever title. Um, and he said he's tuning in from Georgia and he's a big fan. Well, thank you, son. I really appreciate that. I'm a big fan of yours as well. And uh, the, you people down in Georgia really got hit with messy weather. My goodness. I mean, Georgia used to be one of those places you'd go like Florida for warm vacation time. But uh, Well, thank you, Brandon, for being a, a big fan. You'll get a check in the mail for saying that uh, um, to help you in your shopping endeavors. Um, big Race Wrestling Show says another fine mess. He's talking about Stan and Ollie back there. Uh, Alan Bennett, uh, Josephus, we, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. John Bingham. Hello, John Bingham. He says, hello, sir. Uh, do you know what happened to the North American heavyweight title after it switched to UWF? I think a couple of independent companies had it after that, and then it's just retired. I don't even know where it is. I'd like to see uh, who's got that, uh, where it is. Um, maybe I can get in touch with uh, Bill Watts and see what happened to that. So do me a favor, uh, John Bingaman, email me at beaptor at onewrestling.com. That's the number one, not the word. And uh, send that question to me because it'll, uh, it'll remind me to talk to Bill Watts. Uh, Insane Bob's Crazy Shack, again, thoughts on uh, Naito. Do you think he will, he will win the uh, IWGP title this year. Do any of you know what IWGP stands for? I do. I do, but I want to see if any of you know that. So uh, chime in. There's no prizes, but uh, I'd like to know if you know what that is. Uh, I think he's amazing. 
I mean, he, he's an amazing talent, and uh, he's got all the credentials to win that the IWGP. What does it mean? Title. Okay, Dennis Bridgewater. WWE should buy the ECW Philly Bingo Hall. That is now the 2300 Arena. And not only do they have uh, House of Hardcore uh, and a lot of other wrestling companies, they also have boxing there. Uh, they have concerts. They have dancing there. So uh, I don't know if they bought it. What Maybe, you know, for a TV situation, for something like taping NXT, I thought it would be, I thought it would be great. Uh, Dougie Freshy Richards. I love that name, Dougie. Sasha Banks hurts people. She should be future endeavored. I've heard that a lot today, and uh, uh, I'm not for anyone having their livelihood taken away. She might have to be fine tuned a bit, but look when RVD, when Rob Van Dam uh, was in WWE, he was there forever and he uh, uh, he hurt people allegedly, and he was never future endeavored, so to say. So, um, Jim K's won glorious. I don't know if that's a question, but yes, a glorious champion. J James, twenty twenty. I watch your show. I love that show. Great news on there. Hey, Bill, do you think the curb stomp on Raw by Seth Rollins? was a one-off or a permanent thing. I think it's a once in a while on and off. Um, it could cause him trouble. Maybe he'll be disqualified in a very critical match. So I think we're going to see it again. I really do. So, man, he's come so far. Uh, Seth Rollins is so terrific. If you're watching out there, Seth, or if anybody is out there tweeting to Seth Rollins, let him know that... Bill Aptor says he's sensational. It's true. Oh, it's damn true. Um, speaking about that, um, oh, we did talk about, um, what do you think of Kurt Angle as a uh, broad general manager? And also, what did you think of Braun, Braun Strowman's uh, tirade on Raw this week? My God, they're having him do uh, the most maniacal things, things I've ever seen. The only thing more maniacal than what he did that I can recall is I watched the Raw 25th year retrospective last night on the USA Network. And when the Dudleys uh, attacked Mae Young and brought her out to the front in a wheelchair and then 3D'd her through a table. Whew. Can you see Braun Strowman doing that to one of the, uh, one of the lady talents? Unbelievable. Uh, okay, um, let's see here. Uh, Who that nation five hundred four uh, should have been uh, Gloria should have been the perfect ten. Okay, um, Dennis Bridgewater. If Paul Heyman, it's H E Y M A N. Remember, I'm an editor. Spell it right. <laughs> uh, paid all of his wrestlers. E C W would still be there. You know what? You don't know Dennis, and I don't know what really went on back there. They did have financial issues, but uh, you can't just blame it on hearsay. To my thinking, unless I'm there or you're there or we're speaking to someone who is physically there, we get bits and pieces of things. And yes, it's been documented by many ECW wrestlers, but why weren't they paid? There were reasons for that. So it's, it's a whole story. So... Um, Jim K's one. Hello, Jim K's one. Bobby Roode reminds me of Rick Roode. Different spelling. Bobby Roode is R-O-O-D-E. Rick Roode is R-U-D-E. Um, same type of character in a lot of ways. I'd like to see uh, Bobby Roode uh, do the... No, I'm not going to show you the lower part. I don't want the ladies on here to start storming through the screen here. Um... David Bass said, Paige had a bright future. She certainly did. Uh, her family's documentary on YouTube is great. I have a picture on my cell phone of Paige and I that was taken several years ago um, at NXT when they invited me there to do a pilot show for the WWE Network 
um, and I cannot thank them enough for uh, for letting me do that. It's the uh, it's the show that I'm going to be looking down for a minute because I want to see if I can find the picture and show it to you. But it's the show that uh, JBL wound up uh, called uh, Legends, and man, I missed. I, I like that show, and when I hosted the pilot show, when I hosted the pilot show, I did one interview with Dusty Rhodes, if you will, one with uh, Terry Taylor, um, the Red Rooster, and the other one with uh, Larry Zabisco. And as uh, Bruno San Martino would say, that dug on Judas. And I was hoping to uh, to get that gig on the WWE Network, but uh, JBL got that gig, and he did a fantastic job. But what a what a great show that was! I'm looking through my uh, all my pictures of all these people here, but it's it is uh, it is not coming up. Um, I'm going to keep looking for one more second. In the meantime, let's go back to uh, uh, David Bass said the documentary on YouTube about Paige is uh, is great, and it is, and it is. And she's, you know, I know her her whole family. I've uh, been to England many times and met her parents, and she comes from such a great lineage. I'm going to find this. She comes from such a great lineage uh, in this business. And uh, her parents, and by the way, while we're talking about her, you know, they, they did a, uh, a life story on her. Uh, uh, I'm not talking about the YouTube documentary, but The Rock has produced a movie that should be out in the movies. I don't know when about the life of uh, Paige and her whole family. I don't know if you can see this. It looks better from back here. See the, the, uh, cell phone camera here eh, doesn't look too good back here it's all lighting since being a photographer for years but no you can't see it so i'll post it all right um okay so uh comb over is still fine let's go to uh, uh david bass saying mr after made the magazine well i thank you i really appreciate that very much. Uh, but we're all magazines are teams. There's teams of people. Uh, I was the guy out in the field. I was the guy who um, uh, was in touch with the wrestlers all the time. Um, I was the guy that promoters asked to be on TV. So I became the face of whatever magazines I worked for. And uh, speaking about magazines, don't forget, you can get this month's issue of Total Wrestling Magazine. Uh, just go to their website or their Facebook page, and uh, tell them wonderful Willie Bill after sent you. Um, Dennis uh, Bridgewater says, Rick Rude made his ECW debut in the uh, end of 1996. Okay. Um, Insane Bob's Crazy Shack said, the greatest man that ever lived was Austin Aries. I'm glad you feel that way. When I interview him, when I interview him, I will mention that. Um Hang on a minute. I'm still scrolling. Uh, Brandon Aptor said, thank you for the shout out, Dad. And as I said that, um, this, it, it went right right off the uh, <laughs> right off the screen. So uh, okay, hang on, let me back up just a little bit. I'm in no rush here. So uh, let's see where we're gonna go here. Okay, I mean, uh, Dennis Bridgewater said he meant Lawrence Taylor. Uh, no, I don't think he belongs in the WWE whole thing. Um, just my opinion. If any of you think so, uh, let me know. I mean, he had that great angle with uh, Bam Bam Bigelow, but I don't remember him doing much more than that. Um, Jim Kay's one will Undertaker wrestle again. Uh, I hope not. Last year should have been his last his last ride, we should say. Why start a feud with Cena now that should have been a couple of years ago? Nostalgic value. If it's going to put butts in the seats and uh, if it's going to create interest, people will watch it. Um, Big Race Wrestling Show says the comb is over. That is true. The comb over. 
Comb is over for me. That's what you mean, Big Ray. I'll get you for this, by the way. Um, David Bass says the comb over sir is legendary worldwide. Thank you. Um, let me see. Uh, Alan Bennett. First question from Alan Bennett tonight. Welcome, Alan. Best moment in the empty arena match. Tim Storm saying he's a school teacher while throwing chairs in the ring. Yes, that's National Wrestling Alliance we're talking about. What a model. What a model for um, for a school teacher. Big Ray, you have to chime in here because you know about that. No, Big Ray's not a teacher, but uh, he's interviewed Tim Storm many times. Cormel Dar, welcome to uh, um, to Actors Alley. Hi, Bill. Ever been to India? And if so, please come once. And uh, any ideas on Indian old wrestlers? Um, I've never been to India. I would like to go. So what I need you to do is get in touch with a promoter in India and say, why hasn't Bill After been here yet? So I would love to uh, to come there. And any idea on uh, Indian old wrestlers? The only uh, Indian old wrestler that I was very close to was the original Tiger Jeet Singh. I met him in uh, in Toronto and in upstate New York when he was wrestling for Pedro Martinez. And what a great guy. What a great guy. He was uh, fantastic. And in Japan, he drew so much money there uh, against the original Sheik, not the Iron Sheik again. And he used to carry this sword, this saber with him and he used to cut people up with it. So, uh, yeah, I definitely remember that. Hitman, 1755. Hey, Bill, big fan. Thank you very much, Hitman. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. I get to do my Bret Hart imitation every once in a while. Steve Kane, hey, one of the best referees in the business, and he's got a great podcast, too. Hey, Steve, I see Stan and Babe behind you. Very nice. Oliver Hardy was also known as Babe. That was his uh, nickname. And yeah, they were my uh, heroes. I wasn't around uh, uh, to meet them because they had passed. I think Stan Laurel died in the uh, uh, in the mid-70s, and Oliver Hardy a long time before that. But uh, any of you millennials watching, please go and go to YouTube and put in uh, Laurel and Hardy, the music box, and take a look. It's one of their classic short films. Um, Nasty Nate. Hello, Nasty Nate. Party outside the Manhattan Center. Yeah, there will be a party outside the Manhattan Center for sure. Um, the the WWE's uh, 25, 25th year anniversary of Monday Night Raw is taking place at the Manhattan Center in Manhattan, of course. Where else? Manhattan, New York, we're talking about, not Kansas. And also... Uh, at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn. You know who opened that, what the first show was at the Barclay Center? Barbara Streisand went home. Nobody has, nobody has guessed the, what IWGP stands for. Do I have to order, offer up a prize for it? Come on, somebody's got to know what that is. Um, so Hitman 1755, what is what is one of your favorite moments and times with Eddie Guerrero? Times I spent on uh, the road with him, eating at various Denny's and other uh, road places, and just chatting with him about his whole family. Chavo, uh, I'm sorry, uh, his father, um, uh, who was the original Guerrero, and of course... Um, uh, Chavo Guerrero Jr., Mondo, Hector. Yeah, talking to him about his family. So, Gory Guerrero, I was trying to say. Just brain fart. Just came right in here. Gory Guerrero. Yeah, talking to him about his, his family. That's That was the most enjoyable time. Uh, Thetris Weathersby. Hello, Bill. You people all have such original names. I think Bill Hector. What a simple name here. Uh, Rob Ferguson, what was the little studio like where they did Georgia Championship Wrestling? It was small, um, probably sat a little over 100 fans, if that. And the fans were very, very into it. I mean, it was studio wrestling. Uh, and it was bare bones. 
And I, re I always remember this. There was a song back in the 70s when I was covering wrestling for the magazines uh, by Casey and the Sunshine Band going, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. And back in the 70s, whenever one of the good guys would come to the ring, there'd be a group of fans sitting there every time the good guy came out, like Dick Slater or Bullet Bob Armstrong. And as he come out, they'd all be saying, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, we like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I hear it to this uh, this day. Great days, nothing like that today. Uh, Jim K is one. Any chance WWE is swerving us on the page injury? No, I just don't think they're sure yet. No, swerving and wrestling? Please. No, I I just want to make, I think they would want to make sure that it's definite that she isn't coming back or it's iffy that she might come back. So, um, oh, Dennis Bridgewater says he wants to bring back ECW and buy the bingo hall. Okay, Dennis, you go to the 2300 arena and you go see the, the uh, owner there and you tell him you want to buy it if he doesn't take credit card. Jim Kays one love to hear Jim Cornette on commentary. Me too. Me too. Uh, Nasty Nate, will BWO, the Blue World Order, be back for the 25th anniversary? I hope so. That would be great. Um, Joseph Jackai, welcome back. You were here last week. We need Hulk Hogan. Uh, Hitman1755, yes. Hogan, yes. I agree. I agree. I mean, we should try and get Hogan on my cell phone right now. I don't know. In the background, in the background, that is the love, my lovely poodle, Lexi Rose Apter, having a, uh, a coughing fit. Let me see if I can get uh, Hogan on the phone here. This is this is live. I mean, yes, you can watch the replay, of course, on uh, One Wrestling uh, Video. That I hope you. Pe I'm muting this so you people who. Um, uh, Count like clicks or phone numbers can't get Hogan's number here. Um, all right, let me go to my phone here. I'm trying to get, see, I am trying to get my phone working here now. Um, let me see if I can call Hulk Hogan and find out if he's going to be at Raw. Let's see. I'm calling the Hulk right now. Hulk is not picking up. I think this is Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, fans want to know if you're coming back on Raw. I said I would try to call. This isn't Hulk Hogan. What, what are you doing at Hulk Hogan's house? You're not at Hulk Hogan's? You are at Hulk this, there is someone at Hulk Hogan's house here. I can't say who it is, but he's on the phone. Listen, do you know if the Hulk's going to be at uh, Raw 25? Well, you're at his house. Would you? You're obviously close to him. Do you know? I'm on. I'm on live right now. No, no, I, I know. Well, you, we can't hear what you're saying right now. I know the Hulk would not appreciate. I, I was hoping to speak to him, but uh, I don't want to get you in any trouble. Okay, hold, he's going to try and get Hulk. And if he does, I will put him on speakerphone. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Oh, no. Obvious. No. So, uh, it couldn't get him on the phone. I tried. I tried. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Brian Hulk Hogan is, uh, is David Bass says Hogan is a tough sell still. Well, we'll see. Uh, Joseph, do I still believe that Chris, do you still believe Chris Benoit was killed? I have promised um, a lot of people. I have promised a lot of people that I would no longer be involved in the uh, discussion of uh, Chris Benoit's death, and I will abide by that. Um, my phone coming in. Hello, Bill After. Uh, 
I hung up on the holster. I didn't realize that. I'm, I'm very sorry, but I, I'm live right now. And uh, would you please tell him that uh, um, I've just got a few more minutes to answer the fans' questions here, but they all want him back for the 25th anniversary of Raw. So would you mind just passing that, uh, passing that on to him? Thank you so very much. So, and again, I can't reveal who I've got on the phone, but he is very close to the Hulk. And uh, um, thank you, sir. Have a great night. All right. All right. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't know who picked the phone up there. So I hope that's even Hogan's house there. Sometimes I've known to dial wrong numbers. So, okay, let's, uh, let's go here. Uh, so, yes, I will not talk any further about uh, – uh, Chris Benoit, except he was a very dear friend of mine, and he was one of the most classic pro wrestlers um, of all time, of all time. Uh, MD Song, how do you like our Minnesota Vikings? Well, I'm here in the suburb of Philadelphia, and there are people in my house here um, who are rabid Eagles fans, so I don't want to get um, mauled. Right now, I'm in Philadelphia, so of course I'm rooting for the Eagles on Sunday. So Minnesota Vikings. I don't follow football. I only get involved when someone's same thing with baseball. I only get involved if someone's uh, in the World Series or if someone's coming to a critical playoff like the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'm not an authority on that, but. E A G L E S. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Let's go down to some more people who have not had questions yet. Sam 11176 says, Bill, you should be in the WWE Hall of Fame, sir. I get a few of those every week, and I really appreciate that. It would be the thrill of a lifetime. And people always say, if you go in, who would you like? to induct you into the Hall of Fame, and it would have to be Jerry the King Lawler because of my relationship with him uh, as a friend, as a professional, and for uh, uh, being the instrument to hook him up with uh, Andy Kaufman. It's in my book. It's wrestling fix. I didn't know it was broken. Go out and get it, or it's too cold out, go to Amazon <laughs> and order it there. Um, Okay, MD Song, I think that PWI should go weekly like Wrestling Gong. Um, we did have a, uh, a weekly newsletter when I worked over at PWI, and it did really well. But uh, there's a, a lot that goes into that, too, financially, and you have to have a full staff. So I think you need to get a hold of PWI because I'm not a spokesman for them. Uh QUX55 enjoyed your audiobook. Thank you. If you wrote another one, I'd listen to it. If I wrote another audiobook? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I don't know. Uh, I might put out another book strictly of photos and captions, photos that people have sent me through the years and elongated captions. If you people would like to read something like that or you know, go through it, it'd be like Bill Apter's personal pro wrestling scrapbook if you're interested in something like that let me know because uh, i'm thinking about it so it's not a no yet but i don't think i would pen another book um like i did with is wrestling fixed i didn't know it was broken um russell mullet memories of off the top rope articles you're talking about um dan shockett and eddie elner Yeah, um, one of the scary memories was when one of them, I think it was Dan Dan Shockett, uh, compared the Von Eric boys to the Three Stooges, because Danny was a, a heel columnist for us. And right after that magazine came out, David von Erich died, and Fritz von Erich saw that, and we tried to explain to him, again, this is in my book, we tried to explain to him that this was done before David died, and that Danny was a 
bad guy reporter and Fritz didn't didn't understand that either. So yeah, that that's a memory of uh, off the top rope. Very uh, very scary for me. Uh, Arizona LCE. Oh, Arizona Ice. Oh, I like that. I drink sparkling ice. That's my favorite drink. Arizona Ice 24. Bill, in your opinion, was pro wrestling more popular in the 80s or late 90s? It had its ups and downs in uh, both times, but it's it's more popular now than it ever was because it's saturated all across the world. Pro wrestling back in the 80s and 90s did not have the TV or internet saturation that they have right now. So right now it's a, uh, it, it's still like, the biggest phenom in the whole world, depending on your interests. So I hope that answered that. Um, okay, let's go to uh, some uh, another uh, another new person, X Khan. That's K H A N. So he's not in jail. There were two ultimate warriors. There was a guy in New Jersey who filled in for the warrior. He went on when warrior made his name and was forced to change his gimmick do you remember this bill i remember hearing about it but there was one jim helwig was the ultimate warrior period the end there was no guy that i know of who was dressed up as the ultimate warrior and was utilized by the wwe um no no not that i know of if anyone else knows anything else definitely let me know but as far as i know jim helwig was the only ultimate warrior. Uh, Rob Ferguson, talk about Georgia Championship Wrestling. Get, be a little more specific. I did talk about that uh, in the studio and what a great atmosphere it was. And I, you know, cut my teeth on TV down there. Ole Anderson gave permission to me and associate editor Craig Peters to start doing our Pro Wrestling Illustrated press conferences on there. So uh, that was very early to be on the, in my career and to be on the Ted Turner Network. So, yeah, I loved it. And Ole Anderson was the main guy there. And I, no matter what you hear about him, I got along great with Ole. He was very sarcastic. And to get along with Ole Anderson, you had to treat him sarcastically as well. So we're going on 52 minutes. We're going to stay for the hour, maybe a little over the hour. So uh, please invite some of your friends via Facebook and Twitter and Instagram to uh, come into all questions are legal. Um, Nasty Nate, will James Elworth return for the Royal Rumble? Maybe, maybe, yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> I, I think that would be uh, interesting. I think he'd go in and be thrown right at. He might return for the girls Royal Rumble. <laughs> um, Dennis Bridgewater, I'm not ignoring your questions. I'm just trying to find some questions from people uh, who have not asked anything yet so we don't run out of time, but I appreciate Dennis. Uh, Curly McCarthy, International Wrestling Grand Prix, IWGP. Yes, that is what the, in, the IWGP title is, International Wrestling Grand Prix. Thank you, Curly McCarthy. Now, if you will send me, because you came up with this, if you will send me your home mailing address to be after at one, the number one at be after at one wrestling.com, I will send you a copy of my audio book. Yeah. See, when I ask a question, if you answer it in the right way, if it's a trivia question, you're the first one in to answer it, I may have a prize every week that we do this. So congratulations to Curly McCarthy. And let me know your real name. That might be your real name. So, uh, okay, Billy0624. I love that first name, Billy. Oh, Billy came in afterwards, Billy. I'm sorry, Curly came in first with that answer. And uh, Mr. Weathersby came in uh, third. So didn't, Steve Kane came in fourth, but there's, I'm sorry, I can only give away one audio book. Uh, oh, and Sainz. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Alan Bennett. Josephus, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and former NWA champion Tim Storm fought for a chance in an empty arena match on YouTube this past Sunday. I know about that. So uh, now I know what you're talking about. Thank you very much for clearing it up. By the way, um, 
I don't know who I reached when I dialed Hogan's number, but I don't actually think that that was Hulk Hogan. I think, I think I dialed someone else who I know because I have two double H's in my phone and one triple H in my phone. And one of my friends whose first name is Harry, his last name starts with an H, I may have hit him up by mistake and he may have put me on. So I don't know. There's a chance that was Hogan's house. Um, oh, Nasty Nate says it's International Whole Foods Gluten Processing. IWFG, IWFGP. You yeah, it should be gluten. All right. Um, Steve Kane, my buddy, says I'm still convinced Bill Watts punished guys by making them North American champion and having them lug that huge belt around. I remember taking pictures in the studio and this was you, uh, the person who asked about my favorite cover of someone that I posed on the cover and I an answered Neil Mascaris. The shots I took of Magnum, T Magnum TA in the studio with the red background and a brown background with that North American title. That was another great series of photos, but that belt was so heavy. I couldn't hand it to, Ma to Magnum TA back then. You're right, Steve Kane. Um, Billy wants to know what did I think of the Funk versus Lawler empty arena match from the 80s. Do you know what Jerry Lawler told me? I thought it was, was great. I only saw photos of it and then video. Jerry Lawler told me that he did that, especially because he or none of his guys were getting on the cover of the magazines. So they wanted to do something that was outrageous. And he sent me the pictures and it still didn't make the cover. I did not have final say over the cover, gang. I really didn't. Anybody out there, by the way, from uh, from Europe tuning in here? Just curious. XCon said uh, Paige had prior issues earlier. I'm aware of that. Uh, Brandon Apter says, I don't like Kurt Angle as Raw General Manager. This is coming from my son. His acting has become rougher and rougher to watch week by week. Brandon, you're talking to your father. He's not acting. His job has become tougher and tougher. What would you do if Braun Strowman came into our house when you were home and destroyed the entire house and took the dog and... I can't even think about this. Um, so there's your answer. So then don't watch. Um, Russell Mullet, M-O-L-L-E, TT, Mr. After, any memories of Dan Shockett? Yeah, I just uh, mentioned one. Danny did exist, by the way. Dan Shockett and Eddie Elner, please, again, get my book um, because there's stories about them in there. Danny uh, died very young from cancer. He was, the, he was one of our general regular writers. And then I think Peter King or Stu Sack said, let's turn Danny bad guy. And that's what started the heel column. And when Danny died, Eddie Elner who, if you look Eddie Elner up on Google, he's got a, uh, a yoga studio in California. So look him up and you can email him or whatever and tell him I sent you or tell him I didn't send you. But yeah, uh, Danny was a great guy. He was very sarcastic and he was a great writer. Um, so I, I miss him very much. Um, Bobby Hopkins, best memories of Kerry Von Erich that you can recall. He came to my house when my kids were very little and my daughter Haley had an action figure in her hand of Randy, of, uh, Oh, I'm, I'm giving you the wrong story. This is a Randy Savage story. Let's go back. I'll tell you that one next week. Somebody remind me next week. Uh, Kerry Von Eric did come over the house. The kids weren't there. And he did a video for them telling them, to be good to your parents and when you grow up you can be anything you want what i remember most about kerry is um on the personal end what a good friend he was very soft-spoken uh he loved to go out and have a great time and he was very dedicated to his family and what a great physique he had yeah i miss him very very much thanks russell great question uh we've got room for about two or three more questions let me see if there's anyone who hasn't 
uh, been on at this time. Um, whoa, so many questions coming in. I've got to refresh here. Uh, Tony Khan. Uh, hi, Bill. Sorry I'm late. Detention. Go stand in the corner. Tony, hope if you have a question, get it in uh, real quickly. And uh, I'm sorry you're late, too. Um, let me again scroll down to see people who haven't. Okay, Tony said, how many times do we watch Braun Strowman overturn a semi-truck? As many times as he could do that. Uh, come on, this is okay. But now it's predictable and mundane like much of WWE's product. Thank you. There are people who don't watch WWE every week, and some people may not have seen this, but I think that they're just trying to push the point that this monster can do anything. But I, I get your uh, I get your point. John Bryant says, what's my book called? Come on, John, you got to be kidding me. The book is called, and it's back there too. The book is called, Is Wrestling Fixed? I didn't know it was broken. And it's the story of my continuing life in the pro wrestling sports entertainment business. Brian B. Uh, Bill, an exclusive, my new co-host of the WSE Lounge will be announced next Thursday. And it's someone you know, my lips are sealed. Okay, let me see if there's one or two more questions from people um, who haven't asked anything yet. Um, Jason Boyer. Best Hogan movie. My vote is Suburban Commando. I liked Mr. Nanny. I really did. W Glass 90, No Holds Barred. And, oh yeah, that, that was good. That that was Zeus. Remember Zeus? Um, David Bass saying, thank you, Bill, for answering all the questions. His new networking and knowledge of the classic area and the current professional wrestlers is second to none. Thank you so very much. John Bryan, uh, who was the strongest man you ever met. It was the weightlifter from Russia, Alexiev. I once met him uh, at Muhammad Ali's training camp. Okay, one more question. Zeke Guerra, did you ever interview Bruiser Brody? Dumb question, right? Laugh out loud. No, not a dumb question. I interviewed him many times, and those interviews were utilized in... Uh, the Wrestler Inside Wrestling and Pro Wrestling Illustrated. I wish I would have had video uh, back then. Okay, this is definitely the last question now, because I said I'd spend one hour. Uh, Jay Fonseca says, good evening, sir. That's not a question. Um, get the Tables podcast. You need to get on Brandon's podcast. You're right. My son stopped, stopped turning me down, saying that you're not going to sign the contract. Would love to hear you and your son chit chat. Yeah, I would, uh, I would too. And it won't be just about wrestling. It will be about all the sports he loved. It'll be about the dog. It'll be about what he grew up enjoying. It'll be about uh, the flash. Uh, it'll be about uh, arrow um, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And now ladies and gentlemen, before I leave, See, I'm looking over here, not at you, because the questions are coming in here. I'm looking for a final final one. John Bryan, what did you think about the movie The Wrestler? I thought Mickey Rourke was great. A lot of the scenes, especially that scene about wrestling conventions that only you know a handful of people show up, that's ridiculous. Come to Icons of Wrestling in Philadelphia at the old ECW Arena, the 2300 Arena on Royal Rumble weekend and see what it's like. Come to WrestleCon in New Orleans, Louisiana, WrestleMania weekend. I'll be there. Come and see, if you will. Uh, I've been booked by Awesome Wrestling Entertainment. They're also bringing in Ric Flair and some of J.J. Dillon and some of the other horsemen. So go to WrestleCon. Go to Awesome Wrestling Entertainment and uh, take a look. All right, this is Bill After Time to wrap up. Once again, what's the name of that book? And give me the answer. It is wrestling fixed? The answer is right. I didn't know it was broken. And don't forget uh, to order Total Wrestling Magazine. I finally made it to the cover. And to all the people who, oh, John Bryan, Bill, will you be my best friend? I have to ask my current best friend, 
who's lying here on the floor. Seriously, lying here on the floor. My best friend is right here. The amazing Lexi Rose. This is my best friend. And Lexi Rose just got up from a nap because I'm sorry, I can't be your best friend. This is Bill After. Thanks for tuning in to All Questions Legal. Yeah. We'll see you at the matches. And is wrestling fixed? I didn't know it was broken. Don't forget to subscribe to OneWrestlingVideo.com. I got to click and sign off. See you at the matches. Okay, Lexi, we're out of here.